Destination Yuri, the morning program, Fergal McCormick. Welcome, how good. are you? Good to see you, Ron. It's always good to see you. It tells you that it's Tuesday. It tells you it's Tuesday just after 8 o'clock. You're in with us again. Our fi I like to refer to you affectionately as our fiscal guru. You, do, you take no objection to that. Well, Ron, I let you put those interpretations and, and uh, names on people, but uh, I'm happy to be here as Fergal McCormick. Yeah. Our fiscal guru, a man of great wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> now, what sort of week has it been for you? Has it been your first week in the uh, in the the new extended FPM across the world? Yeah, it's been a very exciting week for us. Um, obviously, a game changing week for FPM, and uh, we're looking forward to it and have been for a while. And now we're uh, it's, it's just important now to get on with it and make yeah. things happen. How is the client going to notice the difference? Presumably, the, or the, the great and renowned service of FPM remains uh, at the core of what you do. But uh, now this is, you're reaching beyond, even, even further beyond the shores of Ireland than you've done in the past. Uh, well, there's two things. Number one, the ownership of the firm remains the same. Yes. Uh, number two, uh, really this is client-driven. Because what we were experiencing and, and were conscious of in recent years was that more and more of our clients were doing business overseas. And uh, we were part of an association prior to that. Uh, and we felt that we needed to strengthen our overseas uh, impact through a network. And secondly, we felt we wanted to ourselves learn best practice and observe best practice around the world, becoming more proactive in an international organization. And you know, if you think about it, Rowan, those have been constant themes that I've been saying here over the last uh, 18 months. So Absolutely. what it has done is, uh, PKF is one of the, 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 the global brands of accountancy, it's one of the top brands in the world. And uh, an opportunity arose whereby they decided to totally re-engineer their their service and product in the UK and Ireland. Uh, they're very strong in America, very strong in Australia, etc. Very strong in Europe. And they assembled, uh, they, they started from scratch again. They got rid of their old firms and uh, they started from scratch and they recruited the three of the top firms in the UK. One called uh, Johnson Carmichael in Scotland. Uh, to put this in context, it'll probably be the number one firm in Scotland. Number one, including above the big four, mm -hmm. with 35 million turnover in Scotland. Wow. Uh, they recruited a firm in the Midlands called Cooper Parry, and again, Cooper Parry are a very unusual firm in that they came from ninth to first in four years My goodness. in the Midlands. Mm. And they recruited a firm in London called Little John, who have historically been uh, strong in financial services and particularly the insurance industry. And they approached us mm. uh, last October. Now, uh, we gave it a bit of thought because, to be honest with you, we were looking at that stage, a couple of options, mm -hmm. and we felt this was the best option for us. Now, what does it mean to our clients? It's, a, it's an evolution. It's not a, a dramatic change, but mm -hmm. what we will see is just subtle things. For example, I had three colleagues in Madrid at the weekend mm -hmm. at, a, at, a, at a global accountancy conference, mm -hmm. picking up best ideas. I have two further colleagues, senior colleagues, going to a leadership conference in uh, Derby, actually, mm -hmm. uh, tonight. Now, uh, I think we only all learn whatever our businesses are, whenever we reach out to try and find best practice, both local and international. It's interesting that you, you the provenance of FPM, yeah, if you, one observes, started here in Uri, you perceived the need, to, you, the, con the economy was leading you uh, into cross-border activity, you've suddenly become established in the Republic of Ireland, once again the economy is leading you beyond Ireland, further out into the world and you've responded? Well, I hope so. I, the, my, my, you know, the, the firm, my colleagues and myself, one further quite significant point is, and we, you know, we, have, uh, we anticipate that tax powers we do, will be devolved to Northern Ireland. And if that happens... You heard it here first now. And if that happens, uh, that should lead to a rebalancing of the economy here and a significant inward investment. Unfortunately, no matter how good we made the name of the firm FPM, it was never going to be recognized by an inward investor coming in from overseas. So rightly or wrongly, we also believe it was very important to have an international brand uh, in existence and a service offering prior. No, you've got that. Uh, you referred to cross-border. Uh, believe it or not, we are unique within the entire world organization of PKF in that we have got uh, an operating license for two different legal jurisdictions. We, have, we are operating in both Ireland and Northern Ireland. 
and whilst you and I take that as granted, oh, yeah. believe it or not, that was a major complication mm -hmm. because uh, that doesn't happen. It, it just doesn't happen in PKF. Yeah, we, so we, the we, island economy uh, was a very significant part of our negotiations. And actually, uh, I, I did inc indicate to you they were talking to us from last October. The reason why it didn't happen to now was we had to be comfortable that we our island firm and our mentality of promoting the island economy would be respected within an international organization. It's interesting that uh, you, know, you, you have surrounded yourself by youthful professionals over there at the mill and that the whole raison d'etre of your organization is predicated on that kind of uh, that kind of cooperation with younger people, young professionals, new ideas, uh, and it's a collaborative thing. You just didn't decide to do this on your own. You, I can see you all sitting down in the boardroom of the mill and discussing it and talking it through and coming up with it. I uh, look, it's a collective team effort. Uh, you know, uh, you know, as, as we say, the old Japanese proverb: none of us are as smart as all of us. And uh, indeed, indeed. certainly, we, for some time, have always recognised that the strength of any organisation is its team working together. Uh, everyone achieves more team FPM. But you know, I have to say that youth is very important, but equally, experience is important, and it's getting that blend of wisdom and youth to encourage. Uh, an environment of innovation and creativity. And one might say in accountancy, yes, every business needs innovation. Every business needs creativity. Well, you're recognizing inward investment to the island. You speak about it and you see it coming and you're anticipating more of that and you're, that's why you're, you're, you're leading as you're leading now. Well, I think a significant success of the southern economy, and you have to look at it, but it's a very major fact, is they didn't have the financial resource of the British Exchequer. So they use tax as a mechanism to attract very profitable organizations. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's one of the, the massive contrasts in North and South, and there are many strengths in the North, equally, but mm -hmm. what is, is the, the, the economy and the, the private sector. Mm -hmm. Now, if one takes that further, no matter how well we as a private sector do in Northern Ireland, it is sufficiently, unfortunately, small at present mm -hmm. that from that private sector, we cannot make the significant rebalancing of the economy that we require. And that, so if one stands back and one believes that economic policy is moving to try and encourage more FDI, not for the sake of FDI, because people say it goes and comes. It does, but that's irrelevant. FDI, remind the uh, people. Foreign direct investment. Yes, 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 yes. It does yeah. go and come, but the most important thing isn't the name of the organization. The most important thing is the transfer of knowledge when they're here. Mm -hmm. So if our people who live here all of a sudden are uh, learning techniques that these organizations bring in from around the world, then when they fly off or leave, our mm -hmm. people can uh, you know, splinter out of these organizations and form their own acorns yeah. from which good things grow. You see, the worst, the worst case scenario with uh, the, the system as it is at the moment is that grants in Northern Ireland encourage investment, but when the grants burn away and are gone, the people go away. In the Republic of Ireland, the emphasis <clears throat> is on tax breaks, the proper recognition of an ongoing support through uh, an attractive tax regime? Well, uh, one can't generalize too simplistically, but what you're saying is, is even more significant if you think about it. Grants attract organizations that need money. Yes. Tax incentives attract organizations that expect to make money. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, ah, wonderful distinction. therefore, the nature of your inward investment is quite significant. And that's why if you look at 28 or 27 of the top 30 pharmaceutical companies in the world are in the Republic. Mm. That's why the Republic is actually the largest, I think, the concentration of IT industries per capita in the world. This we country, I love, you know. But it doesn't, let's be fair, we have to be very careful. Uh, and not to avoid over complacency, we realize the issues they have. And equally, we our own businesses. I uh, must get this quite across. Mm. We have to remain in a state of nervousness. Mm. Complacency can never come but, in. But complacency, you know, I remember back 30 years ago when I, when with RTE, I was on a program called News Round. Yes, I remember. I would go right. out with Peter McNiff. Six and o'clock in the evening, yeah. Yep. And we would do television programs about the burgeoning economy, the pharmaceuticals uh, economy in the south of Ireland. 30 years ago, Merck Sharp and Dome, people like that, all mm. contributing significantly, significantly to a growing 
Republic of Ireland economy. Mm. And you know, no taking anything for granted. Th that has just been a constancy of growth, exponential growth. Yeah, right? and, and, and you know, and, and and there is no doubt about it. To be fair to the Republic, because you can take these small decisions, even at the height of the crash. They took very major decisions to read their, their R&D nanotechnology. They didn't cut it at all. Now, you won't see the benefit of that for another 10 years. But you know, the world, case studies are there. Where you invest in research and development, you get the premium. You get the value added. But it would seem that we're not here in the north. We're not even yet at the starting line. We're still relying on handouts from, from Westminster. No, I think that's unfair, actually, Rowan. I think, to be fair to Invest NI, I think they have done exceptionally well in recent years. They're encouraging. Yeah, I, uh, think, I think, to be very fair to them, it hasn't always been popular because our nature is to put the hand out and grab, whereas Invest NI, I think, to be fair to them, have recognised those strategic issues and have been trying to... Um, uh, Re-influence uh, the thinking mind uh, to go towards R and D, to go towards export marketing, to go towards uh, enhancing the competency of staff and management, and I think to be fair, the tourism product is a very good example. We talked about this last week. You could not conclude that there has been a significant enhancement in the tourism product well, in the north of Ireland in recent years, and particularly in the promotion of tourism. That's 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 going to bear fruit and we're looking ahead and see the whole thing. Well, it has to go fruit because the, the, the world tourism market, you know, ultimately, you know, it, it dribbles down to us. The world mm -hmm. tourism market is expected to grow by perhaps 4% over the next 10 years. That's dramatic. 4% in GDP terms in the world is dramatic. So, you know, that on, can only have a positive knock-on effect. And obviously with political stability hopefully going forward, mm -hmm. then we can gain our natural tourism, which, you know, it didn't make sense that at one stage uh, the Republic was attracting nine times more uh, tourists to the same virtually countryside mm -hmm. than we were. The, yeah. The, uh, the obviously, tourism in this part of the world, we talk tourism, we talk narrow water bridge, you know, we're not going to go over that territory again. Uh -huh. But, but it was well heralded to be on the summer meeting of the North-South Ministerial Conference. So it's in there again. Uh, is it a pipe dream in the sense that our tourism will do well whether we get the bridge or not. The bridge would be lovely, perhaps, but it's not central to our economic tourism development. Well, look, if we take a step back from the specific bridge, any infrastructure project that enhances your tourism product ultimately has a knock-on effect for business in the area. So that's it. Really, it, really it's saying it would be good to get the bridge. Yeah, it would be good indeed uh, to get any project like the bridge, which differentiates you. Mm -hmm. How it also different would also differentiate us would be the, and it's now up for grabs, and it's now uh, there's a row going on over at the ferry across the lock from Greencastle yeah. to Green Ore, yeah. and also we have Warren Point Port down to the last four or five contenders to purchase Green Ore Port. Things are happening. Things are bubbling along. Well, they are very, very significant visionary things, and many of those things happen. You know, particularly the Warm Point Green Ore Port. You know, uh, if that happened, that would transform the region. Mm. I mean, as, as exciting times. Every time I drive along the road from Warren Point to Newry, I think of the initial transformation that occurred with the port leaving Newry, going to Warren Point, and Brian Faulkner putting in the first. Is it a dual carriageway? It is, it is from Warren yeah. Point to New York. Mm. That was uh, innovative in thought and all of that all those years ago. Uh, how are things uh, generally? What's your what's your your heart telling you the way the economy is developing? We're still moving on, aren't we? Slowly. I think we're moving on. I think the uh, we're seeing a a gap growing between progressive businesses. And those who maybe haven't just shown the adaptability or flexibility that they need to show. And uh, I think there will still be, uh, whereas the trend is for business failures are now starting to slow down. Uh, my personal view would be that um, there is still a little bit of personal debt to be sorted out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think when that happens, I mean, I think obviously now and on the big thing in the background is NAMA. The, the mm -hmm. It looks as if. Uh, 
it's very imminent now that they will offload their debt portfolio to a private equity organization from, and uh, service who previously did a similar thing in Spain and uh, Japan, Tokyo. And uh, in both those occasions, it had a positive impact on the economy. So hopefully we will we're, see that here. We're talking of just finally of the row that's going on at the moment. Can the, the, the heart of Nuri survive? the Karn Bain retail park that has just been given the go-ahead by the minister. Can, can, can the independent retailers survive such a hit? They're saying they're not. Deborah Loughran is up in arms this morning and, she's, and the political parties are down Sinn Féin saying no to it, the SDLP saying yes. Well, I have to say this is one that I'm, that I'm, I'm slightly reluctant to give a judgment on and the reason I'm reluctant to give a judgment is I haven't followed it closely enough. Yeah. However, what I would say is that um, I think that it will create a challenge, but from challenges, my personal view has always been that competition is good. I think where you have uh, a cluster of accountants, they all do well. Mm. We have a cluster of solicitors, it motivates them. Competition can motivate you, but equally you have to acknowledge that in retail, your market is limited. So if somebody else takes away from your market, your business falls unless you grow your market more really significantly. So, yes. yeah. uh, I, I think to be fair, investment, you know, if you look at nearly every investment when it takes place, somebody opposes it, particularly the existing people. Uh, I think that safeguards need to be put in place, and I think there were some safeguards put in place. However, uh, I am sympathetic at times to the independent retailer, I have to say, but, but equally, uh, the independent retailers who invest are doing well. The in independent retailers like accountants are like large retailers who keep complaining but do nothing. Mm. They will be left behind. So I'd be very confident uh, that whatever happens, once the decision is taken, that astute people will adopt their service or their product accordingly and make it happen. And the most important thing is we want to continue that the greater near area is seen as a center of retail actions and a center, hopefully, of, um, of business actions because it's back to this population thing we talked about again. We need near Eden Dock to be seen as the new uh, population uh, metropolis uh, on the island of Ireland. A whole new ball game, isn't it? Beckons. A whole new ball game. Well, I, look, uh, we, we wait and see, but I mean, uh, uh, Deborah Locker and I must say I think has led the chamber very very well and uh, huge girl. Uh, huge I, th <coughs> I think that uh, she's not the type of person who would make rash statements unless she thinks there's a fair bit of rationale for it. Um, but but equally, uh, I, I I think we all have to also accept that change mm. is not a bad thing now and again. I just uh, I don't expect you to comment on it, but I just get the feeling, uh, I get the whiff of antiquity from the heart of Newry, and I. Any reading of the situation would tell me that in 20 years' time, maybe a very significant percentage of retail will be done, not out of retail parks, not out of the heart of Newry, but will be done online. People will go in and buy it. Well, we can't ignore that trend, but if we take a city nearby Belfast, mm -hmm. the, the middle of Belfast is being transform gradually. Mm. People are now eating more in Belfast. People are now shopping more in Belfast. People are now looking for offices more in Belfast. If you're booking a wedding, I'm told, you will see the stats will also show you that the amount of weddings that have moved from the periphery of Belfast to inner Belfast in the last five years. So psychologically, what I'm saying to you is that's one that seems to be booking the mm. trend of present. That people uh, don't want to be using their car all the yes. time. The people, mm. you know, so, you know, what I'm trying to say here is it is possible you can create a niche experience you. in any area, but it needs creativity, it needs uh, recognition. And one of the key things I'm supposed to say is that if, something, if, if people are willing to drive two hours to go to a shop because of the branding of the shop, and they'll it's still huge. come. It's huge. They'll it's still huge. come. So it's back, to getting, us, yeah. it's, it's back to getting your service or your product right. You leave us, with, as you always do, with on an optimistic and a hopeful note. Uh, and I think Deborah Loughran in the chamber can take very great heart from the Belfast analogy that Fergal has given us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you. Take care.